Before I had my first baby, I was very aware of the data around the happiness levels, satisfaction levels, and intimacy levels of couples after a baby comes. There's some really incredible research out of the Gottman Institute specifically that really shook me to my core. And that was that majority, vast majority of new parents, um, if they're in a um, monogamous relationship, after the first year of a newborn baby's coming into the family report a pretty significant drop in satisfaction, connection, relationship, intimacy than they had pre-baby. And there's only a small percentage, I believe 11% of couples that have a new baby that report feeling more fulfilled and stronger and better within their romantic relationship. And um, so I was like, I'm gonna be one of that 11% because there's no other option for me. I can't imagine uh, being in a different situation. And then I had a baby and I was like, oh my God, this is really hard. Having a newborn puts a lot of stress on individually, both new parents, as well as collectively their relationship and collectively their family. Now remember, stress isn't always a bad thing. Like when we go and exercise, we go and do a CrossFit class or a spinning class, that puts a lot of stress on the body and it's good stress. It strengthens muscle fibers by tearing, making little tears and then allowing them to be rebuilt um, with adequate protein and recovery. <laughs> Key point there in that metaphor. Uh, but Nevertheless, even good stress of having a sweet, precious baby creates a lot of conditions that can easily create uh, cracks or tears in the muscle fibers of the, of the relationship of, of the mom and dad of the, of the, of the two um, individuals that can totally tear an ACL or just leave a lot of discomfort um, or soreness, again, to kind of keep with that analogy. So I was very fortunate in the first postpartum, we spent a ton of time with my in-laws. We had a lot of support with taking care of our, ourselves as well as taking care of Lila. And that made it a lot easier for Warren and I to carve out time and space to work on and be in our relationship. So, you know, the, the joyful, like having certain ritual or kind of, you almost can call it ceremony of sorts of us just simply being a couple and maintaining that kind of the entity, the third entity of their relationship. And that looked like having lunch together almost every day of the week, going for about a 20 minute walk in the early afternoon, almost every single day of the week, uh, doing workouts together many mornings before Lila woke up, um, going out as COVID allowed, um, cause she was born in 2020, going out with other couple friends um, for, for, for dates occasionally. Um, and that was just so amazing. Oh, and then also after she'd go to sleep at night, we would sometimes like watch a TV show together or, or just talk and hang out. Um, there was time for like intimacy. We were able to snuggle, it was amazing. Um, and what I've noticed in the second postpartum, now having a second child, is that all of those things I just described are astronomically more challenging for us because our life is completely different now. We no longer have close family nearby. We're living in a new country and the early morning hours are really, I'm, I'm with Lucas trying to catch up on sleep from any missed sleep from feedings the night before. And um, in the evenings, Lila, she stays up later than we would if she could. So we don't have that bed post Lila bedtime that just Warren and I could be together. And even if we did, Lucas is still awake. Like the timing is all just completely different. Um, and what's more, uh, Lila had a bit sleep wise of a um, challenging transition when we moved to Spain, I guess almost five months ago. And she went from sleeping in her own bedroom in her crib back in New York to basically sleeping in me and Warren's bed every single night um, because she was able to kind of get out of her crib, which no longer made it a viable option. And, um, and recently in the last couple of weeks, we've 
kind of transitioned her back or forward into her own bedroom again with her own very beautiful kind of toddler bed um, and glow in the dark stars and all the things. However, she still doesn't sleep on her own. And so that means that most nights, Warren is not just falling asleep with her, but he's staying asleep with her, which means that I'm not sleeping with my husband, <laughs> but I'm sleeping with my baby Lucas and uh, co-sleeping right now. So it's a very strange time where all of these windows, early morning workout, after Lila's bedtime, catch up, movie, intimacy, all of that, and those times are just removed, sleeping together, removed at night. And we know it's temporary, and it's still really hard. I feel really grateful we've been able to maintain our lunchtime um, almost every single day, but a lot of the things that we would do together otherwise, like it kind of feels a little bit more like divide and conquer because we have less resources and more demands on those resources. Um, Warren's also very deep in building his coaching business and has a lot of commitments related to, to that as well as really like so much opportunity. And me too, working on finishing my book, starting some new clients. It's like, there's a lot going on. And, um, and actually ironically on Valentine's day, um, we didn't really uh, celebrate. Um, it's just not something that we normally do anyways, but I brought this up to him that I'm feeling less connected. And I felt almost like um, it was very vulnerable and I was kind of judging myself for, for talking to him about feeling less connected in terms of just our alignment as well as our intimacy and connection. And what I noticed was that beyond the time um, that we were not, we're not spending as much time together and those, those, those times I shared, um, I noticed that some of the things that maybe he used to um, do to me, he kind of redirect them to our kids. And there was some part of me that was actually feeling like a little bit jealous or a little bit in question of like, in my postpartum, am I still lovable? And that would be things like when he'd come home from CrossFit, when he comes home from CrossFit in the morning, um, the first thing he does is like make a beeline for Lila and gives her a big kiss. And then if Lucas is awake, a big kiss. And I'm like, hey, hey, what about me? What about me? Whereas before we had kids, he would come and give me a big hug when he'd come in the door. Um, or it's like one of our like pet nicknames for each other, like he stopped using it for me. And so I brought up some of these things to him and I'm like, I can see on the big macro structural way of our, our scheduling, there's so much thought and effort and care that he does for me all the time. And I feel so supported in a lot of the big things. Um, but then some of these little things, like we're not spending the same type of time and the greeting or things like that, I'm like, what's happening? And so, although I don't feel dissatisfaction in any way in our relationship, I really don't. And I see in many ways that even the second postpartum with this added stress, I see that we are getting stronger because our communication, like during our lunches, during our kind of like business meeting catch-ups, which is another topic for another uh, video, they're really consistent and we're being really honest and really real with each other, but still it's not perfect and um, nor can it ever be perfect. But um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is if you are experiencing changes in your relationship in any member of your postpartums, that's totally normal. Figuring out what you need, whether it's internal support, difference in communication, external support, like with a couples counselor or coach or something like that, like that's the important thing of knowing what you can experiment with to strengthen and to deepen um, or, you know, to kind of um, put to, 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 you know, take a Japanese um, a, a story around painting gold in, in cracked ceramics, like what gold you can paint in any cracks that appear uh, because, because that's all we can do and that's what we deserve, right? Um, yeah, so I'm kind of rambling at this point, but I just wanted to share some of that because Whew, it is, it's a, it's, a, it's a thing, you know, it's real to kind of be in this. And um, I invite you, whether you're feeling 150% great or you're feeling really challenged by, by shifts in your relationship to like take a pause and, and zoom out and take a look at 
what things are right now and then to consider how realistically um, you might make a couple of shifts uh, big things small things whatever is feasible for you uh, but it really is it's like when there's so much other stuff going on and we have so much um, pull to be focused on our kids and so much pull to be focused on um, our work unless the relationship is in crisis it's so easy to say oh i'll deal with it later oh we'll do date night after this thing happens or after this milestone or oh well we you know we'll become ourselves again later on like no the relationship is the the foundation of the house and must be loved and tended to at all times during kind of the peace time as well as the war time uh if that makes sense so i'll be curious what efforts or measures you have thought of or you're inspired to try. I'm curious how you're feeling. Uh, please reach out. Let me know what's real for you uh, and know that I'm here for you no matter what's going on for better or for worse uh, and sending you so much love.